Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to To the Moon. So, last time, as we recall, uh, we went through the interesting antics of our two scientists trying to get things to work, trying to, uh, you know, get everything finished up, and unfortunately, something kind of went wrong. It seemed like, for whatever reason, the memory wasn't transferring or stuff wasn't going their way, so see what happens. Ugh, you can smell that squirrel nail ran over all the way from here now. Well, that's nice. Now it's all dark in here. But Ma, I don't want to go to <laughs> I don't I done wanna go to school. It's Sunday, dear. Oh, they f oh. Shh. Let them sleep. Okay, sure. I'll I'll let them sleep. Um. Guess we'll just kind of look around a bit. Almost stepped on the paint. Dusk light. The tale of a girl who fell in love with a zombie who emitted the smell of daisies when showered with gentle sunlight. Yeah, sure. Uh, maybe another year. Oh, okay, fine, whatever. Place book on the shelf. I already did that. Oh, wait, hello. Uh, no. What did I do? Sorry. Uh, what was this? The Pilgrim's Guide to Origami, Volume 1, The Key to Avoiding Paper Cuts. The Pilgrim's Guide to Origami has already supplanted the Great Wikipedia Origamia as the standard repository of all knowledge and wisdom about paper folding, for though it has many omissions and contains much that is apocryphal, or at least widely inaccurate, it scores over the older, more pedestrian work in two important respects. First, it is made of paper, and secondly, provides numerous band-aids to make up for the inevitable paper cuts resulting from the reading of this book. Yeah, sure. For the Grand Origami Master, it is absolutely essential for each origami to be completed in exactly 42 moves. In most origami tournaments, scissor cuts are considered cheating, but uppercuts are deemed legal. Okay, that was interesting. I'm not sure if there's anything of interest in this room, other than what we just kind of read a minute ago, but... Can we talk to you? Those two shouldn't have stayed up that late, but I should have watched them. Well, it's not an everyday circumstance. I know, but I'm just so exhausted. I'm sure you are even more so. I really need to take a seat. If there's anything you wanted to ask, let me sit down first. Okay, sure, now you're sitting. Oh, was there something you wanted to ask? Um, I guess we'll ask about you. You know, it's pretty unusual for someone like you to work here. With two children and all, I mean. It's not that bad, really. There's a school bus that passes through here. But how did you even end up here? Well, a few years ago, my husband passed away. What happened? He was in the army. They were the last batch to be deployed overseas. Sorry to hear. I panicked. Our savings were low and the job market was grim. Johnny saw my ad and offered me this job. I accepted with gratitude. This place was peaceful too. It helped me with my grieving. Doesn't the government issue grants to war widows to help them get back on their feet? They do. And eventually I received aid. But by then Johnny was starting to have trouble on his own. He needed my help. Tommy and Sarah liked this place too and so we stayed. As for Johnny, he was glad as well. We're going to miss him. I think deep down he really wanted a family. So what are you going to tell them about John? I... I don't know. I'll probably make something up. But it's no use. Kids are smart nowadays. They'll figure it out. Might as well. It's the nature of life. There's nothing to hide. This is your full-time job, isn't it? What will you do when this is over? 
What else is there to do? Find a job in the city and live on, I suppose. It's a shame, though. I'm going to miss Johnny in this place. Maybe I'll come back to visit every once in a while. Oh, hey. Before Johnny fell unconscious, he told me that you two would probably be coming soon. He said that he probably wouldn't get the chance himself, but he wanted me to tell you thanks for him. So, thank you. Uh, sounds to me like everyone already figures he's on his last leg. Which is kind of unfortunate. I don't know what else we can do. That's the song music. There must be something else we can do here. There he is. Hmm. What is it? It seems like our little Johnny here has some hidden records from the old days. Hidden records? Hidden medical records, to be exact. Apparently, during his youth, he was administered a large dose of enhanced beta blockers. And what luck! They tend to have this little side effect on the curious thing called memories. Beta blockers. Johnny didn't have a heart condition, did he? Apparently not. Which leads one to wonder if the side effects were intended to be merely just that to begin with. And in such a large amount, its impact on his memories at the time of administration must have been significant. You think that's what kept us out of his earliest memories? Well, it's not the machine, I'll tell you that. The maintenance department yelled at me for scolding them. <laughs> for scolding them. So what now? I was just given the reconfiguration frequencies that should get us past the blockers. And once we're in his childhood, it might finally be early enough to transfer his desire for it to work. Then what are we waiting for? But just one thing. Of course, there's always that one thing. In order to activate the new frequencies, we'll need a trigger. A trigger? Something that exists strongly in the bridging inaccessible memory. And we'll need to give it to John for him to stimulate his memory internally. But what do we know of that? We've only gotten a glimpse of his childhood memories. And even if we find a childhood photo or something, John's unconscious. Yeah, back to square one. You know, this job hasn't been such a pain in the arse for me since Nora's case last year. Likewise. This is killing me. I'm going out to get some fresh air. Ahem. Forgot my coffee. <laughs> oh yeah, forgot your coffee. Like, I'm gonna drink it, dude. Received. Note. Beta blocker. Let's see. Oops, wrong way. Uh, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. A drug with a side effect of dampening memories by interfering hormones. Okay. Stress hormones. Alright. So now, what do we do? What the heck? It smells! Quit barging in and out of doors. The roadkill, Eva. It smells. I know it's your fault for running it o running over it. What's going on? The children are still sleeping. Wait a minute. That last memory, the one we were stuck at. It was the same smell. What are you two talking about? The olfactory receptors are directly linked to the brain's limbic system, uh, Lily. Don't you see what this means? I'm... what? He means that smell is arguably the most effective sense for memory recall. We can use it as the stimulant to bridge his childhood memories. And the best part, even though Johnny's unconscious, he's still susceptible. I... I think I'm missing some vital contextual info on this whole thing? Alright, this is good. This is awesome. Now you just need to go fetch a piece of the roadkill. Yes, I'll just- WAIT! Why should I fetch it? 
You're the one who ran over it. Exactly. I've already done my part. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, you miserable bastard. Um, if it helps any, I... I have a pair of gloves you can borrow. Ooh, it went black all of a sudden. They aren't really disposable gloves, but that'll probably change after this. That's fine. I'm gonna have to go get the dead rabbit. Why did I walk into a tree? <laughs> Sorry. She doesn't always turn when I want her to. Oh, that's just great. Gonna walk our butts all the way. Why, why am I walking across the thing? Huh. Deja vu. That was interesting. Animals running down the sides of the buildings. Well, not the building. It's the side of the hills and stuff. But Anyway. The kind of things this job gets me into. It's not safe to just bring in a piece of germ-infected roadkill like this. There's a valve container in the car. It at least make its odor controllable. Okay, so I... Whoops. Oh. Oh, there we go. I, I went to click on the car and I thought for whatever reason I accidentally got her walking away. Wait, what's going on now? What's with the dramatic music now? Where are you going? I... I gotta go take a leak. What? Dude, I'm sure they have a bathroom in their house, but I'm gonna assume that's not the reason. What a mess. The crash shook everything up. Let's see. Ah, here it is. Received valve container. Now to get some of that dirty roadkill. Ugh. Received contained roadkill odor. Okay, so now since that's done, now we're gonna walk... We're gonna walk ourselves back up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep walking. All the chirpy bird noises. Oh, there he is. Oh, hey! Did you get the roadkill? It's ready. Great! Go get it set up. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I... I gotta, gotta go feed my digital pet. What? Yeah, dudette. I've been feeling retro. Anyway, hurry and go set things up. I'll be there in no time. What are you... We got someone dying back there. What the potato is he... <laughs> what the potato? <laughs> okay, first she says stuff like, what the cucumber, and now she's saying, what the potato? <laughs> I wouldn't... Well... It can't be that she's afraid to curse, because she's cursed plenty in this game, but I guess for whatever reason, the really, really bad curses, she feels the need to replace the curse words with vegetables, I guess? What the potato is he up to? I have no time to check on him now. Ah, uh, now I'm starting to wonder what's up with him too. Wonder if something's really wrong, but I don't know. We'll we'll see. So when we get to that exact point, I will send the signal. When I do, I want you to release the valve for about three seconds. Certainly. About time you showed up. Have you made sure the germs are sealed off? Fully sealed and filtered. Not like it mattered to a dead man. 
You should know that Johnny's condition is deteriorating fast. This might be your last chance, you two. Whatever you do in there, good luck. Luck's the last thing we need. Oh, Act 3. They shine their lights at the other lighthouses, and at me. This is almost playing out exactly like a musical, but no music. Well, no singing music, anyway. Okay, so we're at this point, so we're back to here again. Let's go. What? Oh, okay. So it's just giving us the memory straight up. We don't even have to bother going through that mess again, I guess, since we already opened it before. To think that this little thing's causing us so much trouble. I just want to kick it to outer space. I suppose all we can do now is to send the signal and hope. Well, ready? Oh, hello. Something's happening. Quick, send it again. What's going on? Doctor, something's wrong. What? Take over for me, Lily. His condition has been destabilized. Intake levels must be reconfigured. What's happening to this place? It's been destabilized. Get out! What? Get out of his memory now! What are you talking about? If the system doesn't restabilize soon, the shock might permanently damage whoever's in here. You've got to be kidding. Why aren't you getting out then? I can't, Neil. If both of us get out under this state, all our work will be reset. There won't be enough time to redo all we've done before Johnny... Oh, you freaking... Don't pull that contrived crap on me. This ain't a movie and you're no hero. You're just being a moron. Then why are you being one too? Get the hell out of here. Screw that. If you're gone, they'll probably pair me up with, with Alistair. Do you know how badly he smells? Worse than the roadkill. Damn it, Neil. This is what I get for helping you cheat through the entrance exams. Oh boy. Oh, is everything okay now? Doctor? I think we're okay for now. Good. Oh my goodness. Whoa! Oh, okay. It's okay. It's turning back to normal. It's still kind of creepy though. Why the And guess what? Your carrot cake sucks! Wait a minute. Yeah, and at the last Christmas party, you... Oh. Come on, let's go before that happens again. Um, you know that I didn't mean to, you know, call you a moron, right? You know that I did, right? Okay, so... Now what's happening? Can't get across there. Can we mess with this little deal? Uh, sorry, let me go back to the little... Memento... Where'd it go? There it is. Here goes nothing. Okay, something happened. Are we all good? Oh yeah, we've gone back further. It looks like everything's working. Wow, I can't believe that worked. So we actually made it. 
But now I'm not sure if I'm going to like this place. What do you mean? It seems peaceful enough. Neil, did you notice something odd in Johnny's room earlier? Er, what? There was something strange in there. Did you not see it? I... I suppose not? Never mind. I just hope I'm wrong. Can I talk to you? Can I mess with any of you? No? Okay, so I guess we leave here. Wow, that sounds fabulous! I know, right? You've got to take them there one day. Okay. Okay. Why is spooky music still playing? Sheesh, the time overlaps getting out of hand. Look at how many of him are there. It's like a zoo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can we mess with any of these? Ha! It looks like the ball's moving around on its own and he's just chasing it. All thanks to this little fellow's sacrifice. I hope. Alright. Let's see if we can figure out what's going- Oh! The screen went black again. Oh geez, look at the time. I better get going. The store closes early today. Oh, take care, Martha. Say hello to the boys for me. I will. I'll see you around. Well, this is the end of the road. And you were saying? Never mind that. Maybe I was wrong after all. I mean, this place. It's so peaceful. The only thing that exists in this memory that could do such a thing would be... Shit. Duh! We need to go back. Now! Wait, what's going on now? Just shut up and come! Okay. So what's going on to where this is an issue? Oh no. No, no, no! Oh! No! Oh my goodness, he got run over by a car! My goodness, no. I don't understand. If he was unconscious, how could we be seeing in this here when he never did? Still, I'm just surprised that he survived. Actually, he didn't. Er, what? Didn't you see it in his room, Neil? Johnny slept on a bunk bed. Joey! Joey, can you hear me? Joey? Oh wait, it wasn't Johnny. Oh, he had himself a br Oh my god. Oh, oh my. Why did you hit Joey, Ma? Why did you hit him? Joey, wake up, Joey. Wake up. Oh. Joey. Even though they were young, to lose a twin brother, not to mention how their mother must feel. At least Johnny had the beta blockers erase the memories. Not like he remembers it much. 
fuzzily unlinked, not erased. Somewhere in there, the aftermath of those memories probably lingered. What about their mother? I don't think she took the beta blockers. She seems to have gone a little cuckoo. At least I don't really think she called Johnny Joey as a nickname. But if she then takes Johnny for Joey, what about Johnny himself? I don't like it here. Let's move on. Oh my goodness. Seems like this wasn't the only memory unlinked. Odd. It's not putting up a barrier anymore. Don't jinx it. Oh my goodness, that is so sad. Dude, you should totally give this series a try. I mean, really, it's just wicked awesome. I already plowed through three books straight. What's it called? Animorphs. It's about this group of kids turning into animals to fight mind-controlling slugs. Meh, I don't like that weird alien stuff. Why not? It's great. Instead of going to boring school, they get to turn into tigers and maul big bad aliens. They're all like, rawr, 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 rawr. And then they pick up lasers. And it's all pew, 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 pew. <laughs> pew. Oh, that is, that is so cute. Stop that. <laughs> Just watch, Johnny. One day I'm going to be a famous writer. I'll write the coolest novel on the block, and every kid will get my book for free. I'll make us rich, and buy both you and Ma really big houses. How would you get rich if you give away the books for free? Free for the kids. The parents will still have to pay, of course. Yeah, I'm sure the parents will be thrilled to give you money. What, you're still mad about the other day? Oh, come on, I called first dibs on the train fair and square. What happened to your prize anyway? I gave it away. To a hobo? Look, it's not just about that day. You know Ma always favored you. Hey, that's not true. Remember last Christmas? And last Easter and the time we went fishing and... Okay, okay, you know what? You can have my train if you want. Really? Yep. I mean, hey, by your reasoning, she'll just get me another one, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, Johnny, what difference does it make who owns what? Everything that's mine is yours, too. I mean, we both get to play with it, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, come on, you're my twin brother, dude. You're like a part of me. Boy, let's go confuse the neighbors. <laughs> Wait, in the rain? Yes, in the rain, come on. Received note animals. Oi, hello, it gave us all of them. Okay. Wow, so that was really a real big deal there. I mean, one, that was sad for one. That was really, really sad. In fact, it actually reminds me of a story my mom told me whenever she was... Oh, wait, are we going to do a memento? I know, we're going to see another party? Okay. Um, let's see. Hold on. Some kind of carnival, huh? Shall we look around? How about I look around and you just stand here? How about we continue speaking in the form of questions for the next hour? Quit blabbering and go already. Aw, you ruined it. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Yeah, I think this is actually a good stopping point for the episode, but as I was saying, <coughs> um, unfortunately, the showing the death scene of the twin brother, it, it actually reminds me of a story my mom told me. Uh, she actually did tell me that whenever 
her because she actually herself she has you know a couple of brothers and a, a younger sister but it turns out that unfortunately she had one other younger brother and I remember that she told me that whenever he was very very little he was almost like I think about she said two three years old unfortunately um, he accidentally got out of their house and what happened with Joey is a very big reminder of that actually because whenever the <clears throat> My mom's brother, or I guess technically he would be my uncle, even though he passed on years ago. Whenever he got out of the house, you know, he was just a little taller and he went out to play. Well, what happened is that he accidentally ran over into the driveway of the neighbor's house. And unfortunately, the guy was leaving for work and he, you know, pulled out his pickup and he didn't see him. And sadly, you know, he accidentally ran him over. And unfortunately, even though they rushed the little boy to the hospital, sadly, he... He didn't make it. And actually seeing what happened to Joey reminds me of that. And what's kind of sad, I guess, about my mom's story is that she said that, you know, her her family, her mom, then they didn't blame the neighbor for what happened because, you know, it was an accident and unfortunately stuff like that can happen. But what happened, unfortunately, was even worse was that the neighbor who did that, he felt so much guilt, unfortunately, because even though they forgave him, he felt so much guilt that sadly a couple months later he chose to... To end his life, unfortunately. <laughs> and that's probably not a good note to, to leave this on, but like I said, that, that scene with Joey, it, it reminded me of that, actually. That, that was like the first thing that came to my mind when that happened, when that scene played out. But, um, hopefully next time we'll, we're gonna go back to more happy thoughts <laughs> with, the, with this carnival. But like I said, we're gonna leave this here. I think this is a good stopping point. We've at least we kind of understand what happened. At least we know why we couldn't get further than we did. And it's definitely going to be interesting what continues on in Act 3 next time. But if you guys, you know, like this episode, if you guys enjoyed it, uh, you know the deal. Like, to subscribe, and all that good stuff. And with that said, I will see you guys around later. Much. Bye.